What's up everybody? It's Matt, Comic Quarter 410, here to share with you the books and signatures that I got this year at Baltimore Comic Con. I'll do a separate video showing the few sketches and art prints that I picked up, but before I get started, one thing I do want to mention that bothered me a little bit is the fact that it seems like pretty much every artist charges to sign a book now. I do understand it partially because of the way the hobby is with predatory dealers and eBay and everything, but from the artists that me and my friends went to see, there were only three that were signing for free, and that was the great Ramona Ferdon, Adam Warren, and Jenny Frieson. Everyone else, including artists that signed for free last year, were charging five and ten bucks a signature, and some of them had grading fees as high as twenty and thirty dollars, including guys who've been drawing comics for like ten or twelve years. It's getting a little ridiculous, but I do understand it because you see these same dealers every year. They target the few guys who sign for free and they hit their tables with one or two hundred books and get them all signed and submitted for grading and sell them on eBay. And then the next year, those same guys aren't signing for free anymore. So it just, it makes it tough for fans who just want to get a book signed. But other than that, I had a great time at the convention. Got to meet up with three of my good friends from the community, uh, Howler Mouse. Charlton 66 and Tom Ryan all three great guys and had an awesome time hanging out with you fellas this year To get started my good buddy Tom Ryan brought a few books to give to me He brought me this underworld mini comic from IDW. I believe it was a DVD insert. I did not have it and Tom knows I'm a big fan of JG Jones. He brought me this early cover beautiful painted cover here by JG Jones to rant number two by Boneyard Press Thank you very much for those, Tom. Got an unbelievable price on this copy of Marvel Spotlight number six, second appearance of Ghost Rider. This book was less than $15, and it is in that VF, VF minus range. I could not believe that. There were some great deals. Um, with everyone charging for signatures, we got more time to dig. So, um, got a beautiful near mint upgrade to Uncanny X Men 248. Uh, this is Jim Lee's first published artwork. I think it's a very undervalued book. Got an amazing deal on that. Found uh, another 30 cent test cover that I needed. Master of Kung Fu number 43. And that's a pretty nice copy as well. Got a nice deal. Uh, from my buddy Al at Basement Comics. On some Spidey books that I needed for my run. Got a nice copy of Amazing Spider-Man 76 and 77 which I did not have and years ago I had nice copies of the amazing spider-man drug issues it didn't have the comics code and I always regretted selling them replaced two of the three and Al gave me a ridiculous deal on these books got amazing spider-man 97 and 98 pretty awesome copies as well so thank you for that Al found a dealer who had some nice underground books that I've been looking for. As you know, I'm a huge Richard Corbin fan. I already had Grim Wit number one. Found Grim Wit number two with this ridiculously amazing Corbin cover. And Slow Death number four, first printing, another stunning Corbin cover with great color palettes on these aliens. Love that. It's a really, really under the radar book. Um, this guy only had 10 bucks on it, and he cut me a break on the stack that I bought on top of that. Beautiful near mint copy of Ripoff Comics number 8. I'm a big Freak Brothers fan to begin with, but this book is actually the first published work of Alan Moore. So I was happy to snatch that up. Finally got my hands on this. It's the only Faust book, regular production or variant I was missing. This book is a ghost the same dealer had this book last year. He had $180 on it. I pretty much talked him down in half on Sunday. And um, this is the Faust Love of the Damn number one black variant cover. There were only a thousand of these printed. I couldn't even find a copy for sale or a recent sale on eBay to, to price compare. But a uh, 9.6 sold for a little over $300. So I jumped on this when I saw it. So, have my Faust run totally completed. Very happy with that. Got a beautiful copy of Skull Comics number one. Uh, could not believe the guy gave me this for 10 bucks. I mean, that was unbelievable. Very happy to have that. 
Um, another beautiful, beautiful Corbin cover with this eerie color palette. Death Rattle number one. First print and couldn't believe this one. This was 10 bucks. Razor Annual number one. First appearance of She. Already signed uh, no COA, but I've met Tucci and I have signed a number of books by Everett Hart, so so I know those signatures are real. It's signed by Billy Tucci and Everett Hart, so couldn't believe that one. Snatch that up, and that is a near mint copy. Did some great digging in the dollar bins, and one guy had uh, two dollar bins that I found some pretty awesome deals in. Um, Got a near mint Dark Empire number one for a buck, but turned out Dave Dorman canceled the show. Got G.I. Joe 244. I believe this is the first appearance of the female Snake Eyes. Got that signed by S.L. Gallant, the show. I also got a uh, sketch cover, as I do every year. Got a sketch cover on a G.I. Joe blank from him. That's with CBCS. Found G.I. Joe 245 and got Gallant to sign that as well. Found the mask number three subscription variant cover. This is the artist edition variant. Mask number five subscription cover toy box variant. Found this for actually the good thing is the one guy by Sunday, his dollar bins were 50 cent bins. So got another copy of Flaming Carrot number 27 for 50 cents. This is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Covered by the great Todd McFarlane. Finally found this book. No one else cares, but I'm a big Tim Vigil fan. And got Silver Wolf Comics Nightmaster number one with his gorgeous Tim Vigil cover. And a nice copy for an all black book. Razor She Special was a buck. And this is the Platinum Edition with the Everett Hartso cover. Got Bella Lugosi's Tales from the Grave. Very, very cool short lived comic series. Um, just need number one now. That was 50 cents. Got Adventure Comics Star Rangers number four. Another great Dave Dorman cover. Um, more 50 cent books. Amazing Heroes number 52. Has a Bolin Judge Dread cover. I'm a big fan of both. And Amazing Heroes number 77. This stunning, stunning cover of Mr. Monster fighting Swamp Thing. This is by Michael T. Gilbert. Steve Bissett and someone else worked on this too. And John Tottleman. Uh, found this as well for 50 cents. This is Dragonfire number three, an early Dale Keown cover. Found uh, one of the few Xenozoic Tales I'm missing. I'm only needing one issue to complete that run now. This is Xenozoic Tales number 11. Beautiful near mint copy. Love Mark Schultz's work, as most of you know, and found another copy of 12. Wasn't leaving that there for 50 cents. Got this, uh, I believe this was two bucks. This was um, Glenn Danzig's publishing imprint, Verotic Comics, and has this stunning cover to Satanica number one by Frank Frazetta. Got Grips, I believe this is number seven or eight, but I needed this for my run. Got a Richard Corbin Dark Horse one-shot that I did not have. Morella and the Murders in the Rue Morgue. Beautiful cover. Already had this, but um, I'm from Baltimore. Big Edgar Allan Poe fan. Huge Richard Corbin fan. Huge Pacific Comics fan. Wasn't leaving this there for 50 cents. Uh, Richard Corbin's House of Usher adaptation. Pacific Comics Skate Man number one by Neil Adams. These were in the $2 bin at the one guy's table. Snatched these up. Uh, Swamp Thing, number 15. And number 22. And that's actually in incredible shape for a $2 book. Couldn't believe that. Got another Swamp Thing annual number one. This is uh, basically the movie adaptation. I got mine signed and graded by Adrian Barbeau not too long ago. So wanted another uh, raw copy of this stunning cover. Got it for 50 cents. This was in the $2 bin. Uh, kind of rough, but uh, Neil Adams cover to Phantom Stranger number three. Got All Star Western number eight, which I was missing from my run for two bucks. As well as Weird Western number 17. 
and 21 beautiful near mint copy and weird western 26 so always nice finding deals like those took my bloop number one this was a giveaway at wizard world philly back in 2004 and i never got steve conley to sign it so i took it to him and he was actually pretty happy to see it, and he said he's bringing back these free uh, convention giveaway books. So I think that's pretty cool, especially for kids. And this is Steve Conley's new series. I already had Volume 1. It actually won a uh, Weir and Go Award last year, um, Middle Age. And this is a great, great series if you're a fan of Sunday comics. It's a little more adult-oriented. I put it kind of more in the vein of Liberty Meadows, but very much derived from uh, Sunday comic strips with adult humor great great series got book two and book three from steve and he signed them both for me went to see joseph michael linsner and his wife christina as always they're awesome people grabbed uh linsner's 2018 sketchbook and took my dawn uh, this is the first sketchbook he did. I believe this is 2001 or 2002, but you can see Dawn Convention sketchbook number one. Got him to sign that. Uh, him and his wife signed my Vampirella Roses for the Dead. Number one. Um, signed my Vampirella. I forget the name of this miniseries. It's uh, escaping me now, but this is the Crimson Foil variant. He signed that for me kind of awesome. I, I make this rookie mistake from time to time and pick up my books too fast, and I can't believe I, I did that once again this year, but I slightly smeared his signature, and when he saw that, he was like, oh, give me that, and he was so cool, he just tried to fix up the signature and make it cleaner, and then put blood spots all over it with a red marker and wrote, uh, signed in blood edition, one of one on the side of my Elvira number one, so thought that made it actually kind of cooler. He's a really cool guy. Went to see Frank Cho, as I always do. He is a local Baltimore guy. Got my Harley Quinn number 30 sign. Love this cover. And uh, he signed my Shaolin Cowboy number 2. And my variant to Black Panther number 2. Love that cover. You don't see Cho paint too many covers. So I was actually thinking about submitting that, but I didn't. Oh, and uh, also got Linsner and his wife to sign my Vampirella number one um, Roses for the Dead Virgin variant. So that was very cool. Clayton Crane was there this year. Um, had a few variants and bought a few more at his table. Actually, three of those are with CGC right now. Bought this when it came out off the website. This is the Weapon H number one Hulk 181 swipe variant he did. Love this cover. Clayton Crane signed that for me. Bought this at his table. A beautiful, beautiful virgin variant to Amazing Spider-Man number one. He did a Black Cat. Love that cover. He signed that for me. Uh, picked this up as well at Scorpion Comics table. Those guys were very good. They gave me some fantastic deals. They were... They were doing Virgin Variants. Um, if you bought two for $40, you got a third free. So they took good care of me. Um, this is, I believe this is Venom 150, I believe. But uh, this is a Virgin Variant by Perillo. And Francisco Matina Variant to Venomverse number one. Uh, this is a trade dress. This was only 10 bucks, and I had to buy it because I thought this was one of his uh, most badass covers I've seen. Uh, got this Clayton Crane version variant to Venom number one with Deadpool shooting him up. Clayton signed that for me. And this is, uh, they just call him Scan because he has a really long last name that I'm not going to try and pronounce. But that's even what uh, the website who sold this virgin variant called him. Um, so this is the Scan variant to Thanos Legacy number one and he signed that for me. Awesome freaking cover. Went to see the Living Corpse guys, as I always do. Buzz and Ken and Blair are super cool guys. And I commissioned a cover a long time ago from them, and they did have it finished for me. 
got them to do a future quest wraparound of Johnny Quest, and Ken told me his favorite episode was the one with the mummy, so I said, yeah, go ahead and do that up, and uh, they killed it. As always, they do. It's pretty much a finished cover, a fully finished cover. Doesn't even look like a sketch cover, like Howler Mouse was saying. So, yeah, I was very impressed with that. Big thanks to Bun and Buzz and Ken, excuse me. They always, always do great work for me. Love that stuff. Um, I'm actually waiting on it. They're doing a Blue Falcon and Dynamot for me as well. Buzz actually gave me this because um, he was comped some copies. This is Source Point Presents Volume 1 Trade Paperback, and they did a story in this, and they did this awesome cover. And I got Buzz, Ken, and Blair Smith to sign it for me. <laughs> Got them to sign a bunch of books here. Um, got my pumpkin head number one signed. Two copies of that. Actually, sorry. Let me... okay. Sorry, I had a few books in there that were doubles. Um, got them to sign my sword quest number four. Ken and Blair did this cover. And Sword Quest number five. Stargate number one. They did this cover for that. Casper's Ghostland number one. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to pull this next one out. That's what I was trying to remember. I got rid of the other copy. But yeah, so there's a nude version of this cover as most of you know and I got them to sign that as well but this is Buzz and Ken's cover to Hatchet number zero they signed that and the nude version for me and they've been doing this these killer covers for Kiss Army of Darkness for Dark Horse um, excuse me not Dark Horse Dynamite and got Buzz Ken and Blair to sign all these except number six I believe it's out but I'm maybe my shop didn't hold it for me I have to give him a call but this is their cover in the number one. Number two, that's a great one. Really love that cover to number three. I like how they did the Kiss uh, Ash mashups. Number four. And number five. So always a cool experience meeting those guys. They're super cool and they take great care of people. Um was super stoked to finally meet Richard and Wendy Peeney. Been a lifelong ElfQuest fan. Um, what they were doing with signatures I actually thought was kind of cool. Um, they walked a good line between charging people and still making sure a fan could get a book or two signed for free. What they would do, you got three signatures for free. Anything beyond that, it was five bucks a signature and ten for grading. So, thought that was pretty fair. Um, I also did get them to sign my th first three Starblaze uh, publishing trade paperbacks at ElfQuest, but got Richard and Wendy Peeney to sign my ElfQuest Hidden Years number nine and a half. Love that cover. ElfQuest Final Quest number one. ElfQuest 25th Anniversary Special. Marvel ElfQuest number one. And this is the black and white variant to ElfQuest, the final quest special. They signed that. They signed my Warp Graphics, ElfQuest number one first printing. And the final issue of the Warp Graphics, ElfQuest magazine. Uh, this is issue 21. Also got a small, it's basically like sketch card size, but that's all Wendy Peeney was doing. But I did get a commission of cutter from her. And also got both copies of my Fantasy Quarterly number one signed by both of them. And those are with CGC as we speak. Also finally got to meet Adam Warren. Been a big fan of his work since the 80s. He is the king of American manga. Um, he signed my Dirty Pair number one. Number two, he was a hell of a nice guy too. He was signing for free, but he had a Hero Initiative donation jar. So of course I donated uh, sign my dirty pair three and four. Sign my dirty pair two, number one. Uh, both covers. 
the bunnies cover and the regular here and my dirty pair two number two and apple seed book three volume three and i got him to sign my dirty pair biohazards uh eclipse trade paperback but he signed it and did a quick head sketch on the inside very cool guy and also got his empowered sketchbook at the table and he did a quick head sketch on there for me too so he is just a super nice guy very very happy to finally meet him grab some magazines at the show got a steal on this book um really really good price and this is an upgrade for me this is from like i want to say late 60s but this is web of horror um number two i believe and this is bernie wrightson's first published artwork this gorgeous painted cover here it's either two or three but yeah doesn't have the number on the front but uh, my other copy is a lot more rough, but it is signed by Bernie. So I was happy to get that nice upgrade. And I only paid, I think, 25 or 30 bucks for that. I couldn't believe it. Found this in a $2 bin. This is uh, Frank Brunner's Seven Samuroid. Have never read this. Can't wait to read that. Um, got this Quest Star October 1980 issued simply for this gorgeous Frank Frazetta cover. It's in beautiful shape. Got a nice high-grade copy of Marvel's Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction number one. Did not have this book. Happy to get that for my run. Uh, this copy's rough, but it was cheap. Um, this is Monsters Unleashed, and I believe this is issue two, possibly. But um, this book, anyway, has not only this gorgeous Neil Adams Man-Thing cover, but this is the second appearance of Man-Thing after Savage Tales 1. Last but certainly not least, got the last of the Conan Marvel graphic novels I needed. This one's a tough one to find. I gave up on finding it for a reasonable price. Um, I actually got a pretty decent deal on it. I don't know if you can see it. It does have a spine tick here and some rubbing. So it gave me a pretty fair deal on it for what I see these selling for on eBay. Um, this is Conan the Rogue by John Basima. Gorgeous painted cover there. And I submitted a few books for on-site grading. The rest are with CGC and CBCS. Um, it took them a long time. I submitted my books at noon on Friday and got them back 45 minutes before the end of the show on Sunday. But did get them back. Um, submitted this, Uncanny X-Men 125. This, uh, some of you might remember, this was from that... Uh, collection I bought on Craigslist. So this book was less than 75 cents, I believe. Had my presser press it, came back a 9.6 with white pages. Very happy with that. Took a gamble, didn't even get this pressed because um, I've used to find these in dollar bins all the time. I have three or four copies of this book, but I noticed one of the nicest copies I had was a newsstand. So I submitted that to CGC came back in 9.8. I'm going to go ahead and sell this one to help pay for some of my grading. And I submitted my Fantastic Four number 48. This is about what I thought it would come back. I was hoping for maybe a five, but was not in the cards. But for what I paid for it, I'm very, very happy with this grade. Uh, I got a 4.5 with off-white to white. And uh, cover displays pretty nicely for a four or five. I'm very happy with that. So... That was my trip to Baltimore. Um, I will make another video at some point uh, showing the few sketches I got. My SL Gallant sketch cover. I did get a sketch cover from him as I do every year on a G.I. Joe blank. And that's with CBCS. So probably won't see that if last year's any indication. Won't see that for about six months. But here's to hoping they get it back sooner. Anyway, had a great time at the show. Especially chilling with Tom Ryan, Howler Mouse, and Charlton 66. Everyone, thank you for stopping by as always. Take care of yourselves and enjoy your comics.